Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, Accidental Beauty. If you're new, welcome. My name is Laura. I'm a self-taught makeup enthusiast who absolutely loves color and playing with new makeup, and that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I am gonna be doing a first impressions, swatch, try on haul, unboxing of some things that I picked up from Jason Wu Beauty, which is a brand new makeup brand. Uh, by the time this video goes up, I think it may or may not be available in Target stores. Otherwise, you can buy these items on Jason Wu's website. So if you want to see my first impressions, thoughts, unboxing, all of that, then please keep on watching. All right, so let's just do a quick little, like, background. I either heard about this brand from Trend Mood or I got a targeted ad from the brand. I can't remember which one. Okay, fans of Jason Wu, don't get offended, but um, I'm pretty sure, like, I might have heard of him before, but, like, I'm interested in fashion. I'm not super, like, I don't really closely follow, like, really, like, high-end fashion, like, all these, uh, like, Paris Fashion Week and stuff. Like, I don't super follow those. Um, don't kill me. <laughs> but like, I've definitely seen Jason Wu's work before. I watched a really interesting interview with him when I was trying to find out more information about the brand. And he just seems like a really down to earth, really hardworking, such a creative individual. He just seems so humble for someone who's so accomplished and so talented. And I really admire that about him. So once I sort of saw kind of who he is, where he comes from, he's an immigrant. He, I think he's Taiwanese, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Oh, he's Taiwanese Canadian, actually. Oh, he's born in Taiwan, raised in Vancouver, and then he's based in New York City. Very cool. Okay, so he's Taiwanese, immigrated, worked really hard, uh, just has like an incredible work ethic and mindset. Like he designed a dress for Michelle Obama and like, just like, you know, being so accomplished and still being so down to earth is just so admirable because he could be just like super arrogant and he doesn't seem to be. So anyways, he for whatever reason decided to launch a beauty brand. I'm not really sure how this came about. I mean like makeup and fashion are very much intertwined but I just don't really know where this came from. The general vibe of the brand seems very light, very minimalist, very... I don't even want to say runway because it's... some of the things are very... I guess, editorial. And then some of the items that he carries are just very not my vibe. I definitely wanted to support him and his brand. So I ordered a few things. He was actually having this insane promotion as an opportunity to try out the products before they launch in Target stores, which really only benefits his American audience. Basically, the entire site was 50% off. Like they literally gave out a code on their Instagram for 50% off, like it worked on everything. And that was an incentive for people to try out the brand. The products themselves are fairly affordable. Like, they're not quite at the mid range point and they're not quite at the drugstore point. I kind of put them at like a NYX price point, I guess, like sort of straddling the world be between drugstore and high end. Or like, not really high end, but like drugstore and Sephora, like kind of straddling those two worlds. Anyways, so, I took advantage of the 50% off sale. I placed my order on December 31st on January 4th. The shipping label was created because obviously, you know, it's a holiday, so they weren't gonna be working then, which is fine. And then it arrived January 12th, it's like a week and a half. That's really, well, okay, from the time that the ship shipping label was created, yeah. It's about a week and a half, so really not that bad at all. Like actually really fast shipping. So um, I don't know if you can tell right now, but I actually have half my face is bare, aside from my eye makeup, half my face is bare and half my face has foundation and a little bit of concealer under my eyes. So I ordered four products and I wanted to test them out and I think this is the best way that I can do it. All right, let's unbox this because I've been talking for far too long. So we have Jason Wu Beauty, just a sticker along the, um, like the, just to seal the box. Uh, very simple, minimalist branding, which seems very much in line with him. All right, let's open this up. All right, so inside we have tissue paper, lots of tissue paper, okay. 
no bubble wrap, but I don't think these items are that breakable, so it's fine. Um, really nice packaging. Very nice packaging. Made in Taiwan. Okay, so this is Hot Fluff. This is the um, lip and cheek tint. All right, uh, we have Free de Brow. This is a brow mascara. Gorgeous, gorgeous packaging. Okay, next we have these faux freckles, like a freckle tint. And this one's called Jason the Freckled Boy. Just adorable. Wow, this is a big box for something like this. I don't know why it's so big. I mean, it's really nice packaging, but it's just it's a big box. And so this is uh, Woo Brow Everlasting Love. This is the gel eyebrow maker that will last through hot yoga this is just so cute it's a big tube actually wow cool um okay and then we just have my packing slip in here and that is it i guess i'm used to like indie brands writing like handwritten notes and stuff like that none of that here uh but there it does say at the bottom of the packing slip thanks for your business if you have any questions please reach out to may i help you at jasonwoobeauty.com and then their address contact all of that so that's nice. All right, so one interesting thing that I actually didn't automatically pick up is all of these products are bilingual in English and French. So for those of you who don't know, in Canada, uh, it is like by law, all packaging has to have English and French on it. Signage and stuff doesn't unless you're in the province of Quebec, but, um, and maybe some French speaking areas of Canada, but um, every like package thing has to have English and French on it. So to me, that's just, I see it on everything. But for an American company, I just find it interesting that all the stuff is in English and French. And I wonder if they have different packaging for different regions, like I don't know, but that is just really interesting. Uh, one more thing before I unbox these is, is I noticed that the, um, the lip and cheek tint is also good for your eyes. So I'm actually gonna take off my eyeshadow so I can test it on my eyes so I can kind of do almost a full look. So I will just be back in a minute. Um, so I have taken off my makeup. Let's start. All right. So this is the hot fluff. Just the cutest names. Oh man. So this is like really nice. Um, not super matte, but like a, what is this? Kind of like a frosted matte um texture it's not as like velvety matte as the bite beauty tubes but really really nice so this is hot fluff in the shade eclair and like just look at this color it's like one of the perfect nudes it's beautiful oh one more thing that i forgot to mention i think the entire brand is cruelty free and a lot of their products if not all of them are vegan so that's really awesome so next is free de brow uh, so this one is vegan and water resistant. It's a micro brow mascara. This one I got in the shade light just because my eyebrows are very dark and like the eyebrow hairs are almost black. I tend to go slightly lighter with my eyebrow shade. I know it usually doesn't look like it, but I actually do. I use Anastasia Dip Brow in the shade taupe rather than like a dark brown or something. Cause also that's the other thing. I like my brows to be kind of neutral colored. I don't like like I used to use this NYX eyebrow gel and that was in the shade, I think, chocolate. And it was very, very warm. It was almost like a reddish tint. And I don't think I like warm tones on my eyebrows because it just doesn't look natural. I guess my brows are kind of cool toned. So I feel like that looks a little bit more natural. So I find a lot of blonde colors tend to work well for me. And it's not too much pigment, but you can definitely see the pigment um, because it's a lighter color and I feel like if it was a darker color it would be like really really intense. Um, anyways, so this is the brow mascara. Really like shiny plastic. So that's what it looks like. Okay, next, I don't understand why this product is so huge, but this is the Woo Brow Everlasting Love Eyebrow Gel. It's a 24 hour gel beach proof hot yoga proof waterproof excellent this is apparently made for someone who doesn't have eyebrows <laughs> well let's see how it does on lots of hair i mean like my eyebrows actually they look kind of sparse like this one is is growing back with a vengeance this one this one is pretty groomed anywho 
There we go. Oh, we still have some like sticky stuff on here from where it was stuck in the package. Hopefully we can get that off because I don't want that on here. Like literally a glob of like that kind of sticky. There we go. Adhesive stuff. Okay. This is a really nice matte um, tube, like smooth matte. Really, really like it. I believe this one is also in the shade blonde. What did I get? It does not say it's just in the shade 01. So it's the lightest one. But again, same thing. I want pigment. I want to shape my brows. I want to get them to look the way that I want, but I don't need to intensify the color too much. It's just kind of more the shape and making it look natural, but also just building a bit more density, just getting it to look the way I want. Okay, now this one I'm very curious about. This is the freckle tint. Why is this box so big? Let's find out. Also, I just, I love the campaign imagery that they have on here and I love that they included it on the actual, comp like on the actual outer packaging because a lot of brands do really amazing campaign shoots and then you never see those photos. They might post them on Instagram, but like you don't actually see them and it's so much work that goes into it. Sometimes they include a postcard in uh, like the, box if you're ordering from the site but you don't often get to see the campaign imagery so I like that they included it on the boxes I think that's really cool um hmm okay so that's kind of wasteful packaging that's all you get <laughs> and then it's this massive box for just this tiny product I like that they included the model and I like that you can see the freckles on her face but like this is just wasteful packaging wasteful plastic not thrilled about that. Okay, interesting. So they've got like this little adhesive, like sticky kind of stuff on all of these little plastic things. So I guess the product doesn't move around a lot when you're, uh, when it's being transported. That's innovative. It's a nice way to, um, I guess, instead of including bubble wrap and packing peanuts and all that, this is, I guess, a more environmentally friendly way but then you have all this plastic, so I don't know if it's better. Nice little note is that instead of putting like the full product name on the shade stickers, they just have little acronyms. I think you could probably see the net weights on all of these. Okay, so Eclair has 3.8 grams or 0.134 ounces. And as you can see, it looks like lipstick. You get, I guess, a decent amount of product in here. And then Jason Wu is embossed into the bullet lipstick. Uh, Woo Brow Everlasting Love. You get 6.26 milliliters or 0.21 fluid ounces. I don't know if that's typical or not. Like you get 0.14 ounces of Anastasia uh, Dip Brow Pomade, but it's a different formula. So I don't know if you can really compare that. Uh, let's see here. The Brow Mascara, uh, which is in the shade Light, if I forgot to mention that, you get 7.27 milliliters or 0.24 fluid ounces. So to compare with the Maybelline Brow Precise Fiber Volumizer, it's kind of a brow mascara, uh, that one you get 0.27 fluid ounces or 8 milliliters, so you actually get more in the Maybelline. And then the Freckle Tint does not actually have the amount on here. So let's see if I can find it online. If not, we'll just uh, jump right in. We actually don't have a weight on here. That's odd. Okay, well, all right. So let's just start off with brows. So normally in my makeup routine, I do my brows first before anything. Sometimes I change it up, like today apparently. Let's do the brow mascara on the side where I don't have any makeup. Uh, looks like there are little fibers in here. I hope those are fibers and not something else. It has almost like an alcohol smell, like almost like a, like a hard liquor kind of smell, but I'm not too worried. It's probably just alcohols that they use to like stabilize or I don't know, preserve the product or something. Uh, why don't we zoom in so you can actually see what I'm doing? So I'm just gonna brush this through my eyebrow hairs. I'm gonna have to clean this up. Okay. so. Pigmentation on this is lighter, I guess, than I expected. Wow, this is warm tone. Holy. So I think I'd probably, wow, this is incredibly warm toned. I don't know if this would work even for most blondes. This feels very, like, if you're strawberry blonde, 
maybe this would work for you. Depending on what wig I wear, this could work. But day to day, this is not the right color for me. Uh, because this is messy, shall we say, I'm just gonna quickly clean this up with some concealer. Pigmentation is super, super nice for someone who doesn't want it to look like you're wearing product or to have it look too obvious that you're wearing product. This is really, really nice. It's just made for someone with a warmer hair color for sure, but really pretty. Like once I cleaned it up, it's actually really, really nice. I'm just not used to myself with warmer colored brows. That's all. Kind of wish I picked up the brown shade because this is a really, really nice product. Okay, let's try the other one. So this one is the, oh, I probably should have read the instructions. Um, so that one was free to brow. Okay, we don't actually, don't actually have instructions on this one. Okay, cool. Oh, right, so this one was in the shade two. I could have gotten, I think it was shade one, which was just a clear mascara. And I thought about it, but he doesn't have, I don't think, did he have brow pencils? No, you know what? I think he has brow pencils and I already have a bunch of brow pencils that I want to try out. So I figured let's try out stuff that I don't really have. I like this actually. Uh, next is the brow gel. Does this one have any instructions? Apply to clean dry brows using the applicator. Carefully create the shape you desire. Note, use a delicate touch and please go light at the front of the brows because no one likes angry brows. The next product is obviously very pigmented and it's, I've never seen a product like this before. It's got like a brush tip and the ends are kind of like fraying a little bit, but I think that's just because of how it sits in the bottle. I want to like wipe this off. I don't know. I don't know like how to do that. You see like the ends are kind of fraying. I don't know if you can even see. Let's see if I put it against here, maybe you can see. The problem with a brush like this is I think if it was put in the tube incorrectly, it kind of holds that shape. Like I think the same thing happened with the, um, some of the Kylie lip kits, like the liquid lipsticks. I think that happened to them. Anyways, I'm trying to get the product off. So like I only have a little bit of product on the brush. This is gonna get very messy very quickly. So I'm actually doing this on my like non-dominant side. So this is gonna be a little tricky. Okay, yeah, this is also gonna be too warm for me. Okay, so this product is a little trickier to use. I haven't really seen a product like this before. Not quite like this anyways. This is the type of thing where I would want to fill in my brows first with a pencil get the shape I want, and then use this to add pigment. Cause like, I mean, my brows don't look even right now. This one was definitely harder to control. Mascara actually allowed me to get a really nice shape. Although this one is my nicer brow. Like it's just always been easier to style and this one needs some help. So let's see if I can get my arch back. Like it's not hard to use, it's just hard to control to the shape that you want. And like, I use a very small angled brush to do my brows with the pomade. So I like, you know, precision and control and this isn't quite that. I don't know if this one is a product for me. The mascara, I really like. This one I like, but the applicator is not my favorite. Um, but as far as pigmentation is super nice, as far as color matching between these, I mean, this one's a little bit darker, but I feel like they did a really good job matching the colors. So if you know what shade you are, you could kind of like, I mean, in theory, you could probably buy like one product in every color. So like one product in every shade of light and you'll pretty much be matched to your hair color. I don't think they have a ton of colors. So like, you know, if you're blonde, but you have cooler undertones, for example, you might struggle a little bit. This isn't completely dried and I accidentally touched it. Okay, now that I cleaned it up, it's really not that bad. It's actually quite nice. So the brow gel definitely gives you a more intense look. It is darker, maybe a little bit cooler toned, whereas the mascara is um, lighter in pigmentation and is a bit warmer toned as well. You know what? I actually like these. I figured these products would be meant for Gen Z, that like light makeup, kind of glossier vibe. 
And I mean, I guess I'm kind of getting it with the brow mascara. This one, I feel like is more for like millennials who are still into that. Well, I mean, I guess millennials are also hopping on the like more natural fluffy brow train, but the brow gel will definitely give you more of that, um, that classic like dip brow look, like that kind of 2015 eyebrow look rather than a fluffier brow which if I did brush my brow hairs up, like I could definitely get that effect from the mascara. Let's do the hot fluff first and then the freckles last. Um, a new age matte weightless lippy that can be worn as an eyeshadow, blush, and lip color, vegan formula. How to use, apply onto lips, eyes, or cheeks. Blend out with your fingertips or favorite applicator. Okay, so it doesn't really say if you need a primer or not. That's why I did half my face with foundation and half not, because I really want to see how the, uh, I guess the two complexion products perform. I'm pretty sure these products are for that like kind of glossier nude sticks, like very light to no makeup, Gen Z vibe, which I'm very much not. But I just want to see if they work on foundation. I want to see if they work on a um, an eye primer. This is just a Ulta matte eye primer. Uh, so let's do primed on the foundation side. I'm just gonna pat this on. I think this is way too much by accident. Oh well. The only thing I don't like about these all-in-one products is it's not the most sanitary. If you're putting it on your lips and then you're putting it on your eyes and your face and you don't know what kind of bacteria is there. I guess the only thing is like it should be only going on your face so at least it's like a little bit cleaner but still it's kind of gross. I guess I'll just swipe this on my eyes. Let's do the no makeup side first. It's actually really creamy. I was like actually kind of anxious that it would be really dry and like dragging on your skin, but um, there is like a little bit of dragging, but it does feel creamy. This is a stunning color. This is like a gorgeous terracotta. Ooh, this actually makes my eyes really pop. I'm just gonna blend this out, see if it kind of blends at all. Oh, I guess it does a little bit sort of blends out very softly. Kind of giving you like an editorial look right now. Let's do the whole face first. I guess I'll just like swipe it on my cheeks. I guess I'll just blend it out with my fingers. This is actually a <laughs> shocking amount of pigment. I didn't expect that, wow. Okay, let's just tone this down a little bit because I kind of went crazy. So a product like this, I mean, it's like harder but easier to control where your blush is going. I'm kind of just used to like doing it with my brush and not really thinking about it. And what I really like is it doesn't, like, I mean, I'm like blending it down into nothing, but like, if you just kind of pat it in, like it does keep its pigmentation. All right, and then I'm gonna try this on my lips. So I'll just do half. Actually, hmm, I guess it doesn't really matter. Very, very comfortable on the lips. Oh, this is such a gorgeous color. I wish he made this in a liquid lipstick form. This is a perfect, terracotta color. Oh, I do wear crazy colored lipsticks, but often I tend to go for something neutral so I can do a bolder look on my eyes. This is exactly the type of shade that I'm looking for. Because it's so soft, it feels like it won't stay on the lips throughout the day, like especially through food, which is why I gravitate towards liquid lipsticks over bullet lipsticks. But because I'm working from home right now and I can really apply my makeup as many times throughout the day as I want, this is gonna be a really nice option for video calls. It doesn't feel like it's moving around on the lips or anything, like it's very, very comfortable. Let's, I'm just gonna wipe that off a little bit cause I don't want like bacteria and all that. Uh, so let's try this on the other side. See if it makes a difference to use a primer. I think I'm definitely getting more opacity on the primed side. Okay, because of the shape, it's like a little difficult to apply in like the crease. I think the idea with this is it's one of those like grab it on the go, just like apply quickly, your makeup's done and you're out the door type products. But not something that you'd spend like four hours doing your makeup in the morning. See, I hate doing this to lipsticks. I like when my bullet point is sharp and it was sharper and like it's still sharp, but like I've kind of lost some of that sharpness because I was trying to get in my crease. So I don't love that, but I do actually really like the effect of this as an eye shadow color. Like do like a cute monochrome look. Really like this. This is like normally not my style, but big fan. Okay, the test. <laughs> Let's see how this performs on top of foundation. I don't have powder on because figured 
why would I? Also, I'm going to be taking this makeup off after anyways. Also, I think I got some foundation on my lipstick. <laughs> okay, so it is blending out actually fairly nicely. It's not dragging. Like, I mean, I'm currently like moving it around. I don't have the intensity, I think, that I have on the non-foundation side. So this would definitely be a product for lighter makeup days. I don't usually wear foundation actually, really, unless I'm filming a video or I'm having like a bad skin day or um, like I just look really tired and I need to like look more awake. Okay, so the foundation, interestingly, kind of diminishes the intensity of this blush, but it really shows up on skin without any foundation. Although my complexion is rosier, so that might be why. Yeah, that's doing nothing. Okay, definitely finger is the way to go. I definitely like this. I think I'm gonna have to play around with this a bit more, just kind of trial and error. I do like it quite a bit actually as all three. I like my blush to be obviously as super intense and like I'm really into these sort of like coral terracotta type shades. I actually love this kind of like sunburnt look. I think it's really cute actually. You know what, I'm gonna finish with freckles. So let me just add a little bit of highlighter. Mm, although I don't really want to see that there's my dilemma like I should have just ordered that highlighter I wanted to order the highlighting stick I think it's in the shade opal it's really really pretty it's like a holographic kind of like silver bluish color but I've already got a similar product in liquid form the cover effects custom enhancer drops in the shade halo I wanted to get things that I don't already have so I refrain, but like every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna leave out the highlighter. I'm just gonna use products from this brand and let's try out this freckle tint. I've never actually used a product like this before. I really wanna buy Freck and it's so freaking expensive. Like even to buy the bigger one, which is a better value, it's ridiculously expensive for what it is. So I'm hoping this will be a good dupe. Okay, so instructions. Apply a single dot or in clusters of dots. Wait a few seconds, leave on longer for a bolder look. I've seen people demonstrate how this is used. I would leave this on for more than a few seconds because I've seen people put it on and then immediately dab it off and it just disappears. And I like freckles to be prominent because if you're putting on freck freckles you might as well see them okay so this is i kind of spilled a little bit earlier it's a reddish brown i can't remember if there are multiple shades of this one but it looks to be a similar idea as freck freck is also a reddish brown which i think is kind of more natural looking uh looks like there's only one shade of this so um wish me luck don't do the greatest with these type of like brush applicators just gonna go over like my own freckles. This is actually a really easy applicator to use. And if you mess up, the formula seems to be fairly forgiving. And it seems to kind of like, if you sort of dab it off cause you messed up, it kind of moves in the shape that you want it to. Let's just leave these guys on a little bit longer. Okay, yeah, it's not the most pigmented. I don't know, when I dab them, you seem to kind of like disappear. Like I'm actually, I'm trying to let them stay on as long as possible. Yeah, because when I dab them, like they just kind of disappear. But then if I leave them on, they look really fake. Okay, I think I might have to play around with this product a little bit more to get the hang of it. You can see it. Like even when I don't dab them, they just kind of dry to like a very, very light brown. I don't know. I think I need to kind of practice with this product a bit more. One thing I will note is that if you have a darker skin tone, this probably won't show up on you. So it would be great if uh, this brand did darker shades of this in the future. Okay, I'm gonna let these dry. On the unprimed side, uh, the, what's it called? The hot fluff is already starting to crease on my eyelid, whereas on the primed side, it's not. So definitely use a primer. Okay, yeah, these, <sighs> okay, maybe I just suck at faux freckles. Let's just try. Maybe going over with a sponge and I think I just messed it up. Yeah, um, I think I need some practice with these faux freckles because they look faux. <laughs> no, they look really fake. Let's see, okay, yeah, if I go over with a sponge, I mean, then I kind of lose the intensity, but they also look a bit more natural. So there's the trade-off. Can I go over that a little bit? Uh, okay, 
So uh, yeah, I'm gonna just do mascara. Uh, I don't even know if I'll bother with eyeliner. I think I'll just keep it kind of light and editorial and then I'll be back with my final rundown. All right, so this is the final look. I feel like my ring light is just washing out the freckles. Like I can't really see anything in the monitor. They are actually kind of on the light side, although in person they are like, I mean, you can see them, they're there. I'm just gonna put up a picture on screen that I took actually just before I started filming this conclusion section. And I am so happy with the way that this looks. I feel like, okay, so the makeup that I normally do on my channel is very bold and intense and out there. And it works really well on a DSLR and a ring light, which is my setup right now, or my setup in general. And this style of makeup, which I guess is technically closer to what I do kind of like every day, this works really well with a ring light and my iPhone actually. And like, oh my God, like this is unedited and it looks really good. <laughs> like, I don't think I've ever taken a selfie where I feel like I really like it to the point where I would post this without editing it. Uh, let's talk about these products. In order of how I applied them, the brow mascara, really, really nice. You know what, now that I'm looking at it longer and now that it's kind of settled a little bit, it is still kind of warm, but it definitely looks like a blonde. So I feel like maybe it just needs a minute to kind of like settle a little bit and it kind of calms down a little bit after. I'm not sure, maybe I'm just used to it by now. It's really pretty. I think next time, or like if you're watching this and you have kind of similar coloring to me, I would suggest going one shade darker personally. It is nice. It just doesn't look like it's my natural color, especially when you can see how dark my natural hair color is. These eyebrows don't match but it's super pigmented, very light. I don't feel it, like, I mean, now that I'm touching it, I can feel it, but it doesn't feel heavy on my eyebrows, which some eyebrow products can do that. So I give it a solid five out of five. Really, really nice product. Easy to apply, no complaints. All right, the brow gel, also very lightweight, very comfortable. It actually is probably like less heavy feeling on the brows, like in terms of when I'm actually touching it. Neither of them feel like I'm wearing anything on my brows, which I really appreciate. I think what I would want with a product like this, I mean, the packaging is absolutely gorgeous. It kind of reminds me of uh, Anastasia's new like lip tints. But anyways, I'm getting distracted. I think what I would prefer for a product like this, because it is a little tricky to apply with the brush, is I'd almost want it to be in a pot, like actually kind of similar to the Anastasia one, but just have it be liquid. And then you could take like an eyebrow brush or like a smaller brush and then apply it the way that you want. So you could get hair-like strokes if you desire that kind of effect because I feel like this kind of applicator and maybe I just suck with brush tips but it's kind of big and I feel like really the only look that you can do with this type of product is just kind of fill your brows in completely and kind of shape them but you'll definitely have to clean them up with concealer unless you have a steadier hand than I do. Color wise I definitely like this color a lot more than the other one. And both of these are technically like the blonde or light shade. This one's a bit cooler toned and it matches my hair color a little bit better. It is light, but I feel, just trying to look at this. Yeah, I feel like this matches my hair color a lot better. This is kind of what I was expecting the blonde one to be actually. I don't mind either of them. They are kind of light. Consistency. Oh, the product is really nice. Like it wasn't too runny and it wasn't too goopy either. No complaints. I give it also a solid five out of five. Oh, another thing that I like actually about the brow gel is it doesn't dry down right away. So you do actually have some time to work with it a little bit. And like I was able to clean up my brows and it actually did kind of spread a little bit, but I kind of appreciate that rather than it drying down completely and then struggling to fix your work. Like I also kind of cleaned up a little bit in the front part of my brows so that I don't have angry brows. And uh, it actually like was able to kind of dissolve a little bit. Whereas the uh, mascara, I mean, the shape of the like applicator was, you know, it's the same as a mascara applicator. 
so I didn't have too many problems there. Next is the Hot Fluff. I love this product. I love this color. I purposely chose kind of a coral terracotta color because I find it's really flattering on my coloring, my skin tone. It kind of looks like the flush color looks kind of natural to me when I blush. In terms of my coloring, I have green eyes and it just really brings out the green. All the colors that he selected for these, um, I don't remember all of them. They were all kind of nude, but they were all beautiful. This product actually really surprised me. It worked very well on the eyes, the lips, and the cheeks. Very easy to apply, although I will say that it worked a lot better on the, uh, the non-foundation side than the foundation side. I purposely went in with like, I mean, it's a medium coverage foundation, but I tried to sheer it down and I did struggle. Like, I mean, it obviously showed up on the foundation side, but I did struggle to kind of blend it in because it just seemed to sort of be absorbed by the foundation. Whereas on the side where I'm not wearing any facial makeup, it applied and blended a lot easier because there was nothing underneath. Although it almost looks splotchy and maybe that's just because I suck at blending or something. Whereas like this side, it looks a lot cleaner. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I also have some like kind of redness to my skin. I wouldn't say my skin is like splotchy, but I do have eczema on my face and I do get flushed and I do have sensitive skin. So foundation and stuff kind of evens out my skin tone. So it could just be this product mixing in with just my natural skin tone. On camera, it doesn't look that bad. In person, it looks a little splotchy. As far as a lip color, so comfortable, so flattering. This is an all-in-one product that I actually want to use as all-in-one. And on my eyes, it's so flattering. It did, as I mentioned earlier, it did crease actually on the unprimed side. So you can see that creasing there uh, on the, oh, actually, you know what? It's even creasing on the primed side, which is interesting. And I haven't even been wearing this for that long, like maybe like 10 minutes, if that. So that's very interesting. I think because it's so creamy, next time I'd probably use the NYX glitter primer because that makes everything stick to it. Blend it out really nicely. Yeah, no complaints. I give it a solid... 10 out of 5. I really like this. I can definitely see this product being an everyday product for me. I really want to incorporate this into like my regular routine. It's just such a beautiful, versatile product. The only thing is like, I just feel weird using a product on my lips and on my eyes. So like I did wipe it off in between, but like it just kind of makes me feel weird, but I would actually use it on everything. Like it's just, yeah, it's so stunning. I can't wait to play with this some more. Okay, and then the last product is the Freckle Tint. Guys, I struggled with this. What I found is the best way that this seemed to apply is literally like dabbing it on and then barely even tapping it off because when I tapped it off, it just kind of disappeared. One thing that I'm finding that I don't particularly love, as it dries, it kind of gets more cool toned. I know it does like these products do kind of change color a little bit, but I just wish that it stayed kind of that reddish tone rather than get cool tone because like once it dries cool tone, it looks fake. I think the, the really good faux freckles are the ones that still kind of have that warm hue to them. I haven't really like analyzed people's freckles too much, but generally real freckles kind of have like a warmish hue to them. And when these don't, they look fake. Although also like I do have some freckles, but I'm not super freckly. So maybe it's just seeing myself with freckles looks weird. I don't know. From a distance, it actually doesn't look too, too bad. It's just some of these are more prominent than others and it looks kind of odd. I don't know because I've seen people kind of like layer freckles and maybe or like faux freckles, I should say. So maybe that's it. Does that look better? Maybe. This product is super cute. I definitely think there's a bit of a learning curve. So I'm going to have to play around with this some more. I think I can make this work and I think I can figure out how to use it because like from a distance, it does look natural-ish except for the ones where my brush kind of slipped and it's like instead of like a circle, it's sort of like a dash then it looks kind of fake so I think like if someone was looking at me from a distance I think they just think that I'm freckly but when you look at it close up I feel like that's when it looks fake maybe if the brush tip was like a little bit stiffer and a little bit shorter it might have been easier to apply but then like this is the first product like this that I've tried 
So maybe it's just user error. So I'm gonna give it a four and a half out of five because I wish the color when it dries down, I wish the color was a bit warmer. I don't know, I just wish that they looked a bit more natural because like across my face, they look good. And then on my forehead, for some reason, they look stupid and I don't know why. Maybe I just suck at applying freckles. I don't know. They just look super cool toned and maybe it's just because I patted it down with foundation. But like, other than that, I really do like it. I like the idea of the product and I like that it's a freckle tint that isn't like $40. So I appreciate that. Overall, I'm super happy with these products. I'm so glad I got to try them out. Um, I should mention here because I didn't mention it at the beginning. I bought all of these with my own money. So this isn't sponsored. Uh, I just really wanted to try out this brand and I'm so happy that I did. I definitely would recommend this brand to everyone. I think they have a solid assortment of products depending on whether you want something a bit more bold or a bit more neutral. Like they have eye palettes and stuff and it just wasn't my thing. It was like too light and neutral for me. I don't think they have complexion products yet, but like, you know, they have brow stuff, they have lip stuff. So if you're kind of into bold makeup, but then you wanna try something from the brand, I'd kind of recommend the route that I took. They also have lip liners, they have mousse lipstick, like they have a lot of stuff. So I'd highly recommend you check out their stuff. Unfortunately, I think by the time my video goes up, I think the 50% off sale is over, but they are pretty affordable. So that's a plus. <laughs> and I, I mean, if they did such a huge sale, I imagine that they'll probably do more sales throughout the year. I just can't recommend them enough because I am so happy with my purchase and uh, really excited to see more from this brand. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section below if you've tried anything from this brand, if you want to try anything, if my video helped you make a decision for what to buy from this brand, let me know. Feel free to comment below. If you enjoy the type of looks that I do here on my channel, normally they're not this <laughs> neutral. Normally they're a bit more intense. I'm sure you'll love my content on my other social media. I've got links in the description box. And if you enjoy the type of videos that I do here and you want to see more, I'd love it if you could subscribe and turn on notifications and that way you'll get updated every time I post a new video. And I'll see you guys next time.